Alrighty, we've got a pretty nice weather window for a couple of days, so I thought I'd bring the crew up and um, head to a little property I know up the mid north coast and see if we can't catch a couple of bass and test some of the new dial gear out. We've got the couple of the new TD black rods, uh, new little touch of the reel, and one of the Excella spin reels. So, got a bag full of the new Bay Junkie plastics and some really nice water down there, and I reckon. With that storm brewing, we're a pretty good chance of a decent bass this afternoon, so we'll wander down and see what the water's like. I've got the bait junkie prawn on. I'm just running it on a like a really light weighted worm hook. It's not a massive shrimpy river because there's not a great deal of weed, but I have been up here over night time and in amongst the boulders there's plenty of them. So I reckon with the low water, shallow water, uh, and a bit of weed poking around, they're gonna be right onto a prawn. So we'll, I'll be able to get it right into right in amongst all the junk do but being relatively weedless. Um, and hopefully I can sight cast them. This sort of bait's good when you know that they're there because you can sort of pinpoint it, keep it right in the zone, but sort of make it sink pretty slow in front of them. Uh, oh, I'm getting... <laughs> ah, log. Get off, there he is. Like that. Didn't take long, did it? Just flicking that prawn, letting it drift down with the current. He was all over it. He had like a freight from it too. Look at that. Beautiful. Not a big fish, but that's pretty well the average size up in these creeks. You get the odd really big one. Um, I don't think I've ever caught a 50 out of here, but the average is really good and they pull really well in this skinny water, so. Um, Third, second actual cast. It's a pretty good sign. He um he smashed that prawn, but I reckon we've got bigger ones to catch, so we'll get him in and we'll keep walking. Cool. Crazy low, it's sort of probably just below average, I reckon. Good bit of weed in this next hole, it might be good for the prawn actually. He's a good going, yeah. Full of water on this. little tiny bait around, so might have a little two and a half inch minnow. It's pretty snaggy and weedy. And I've a couple of big logs over there and where we're standing and they're not, I haven't seen them charging out at anything yet, so I might go something smaller and lighter and fish it weedless or snag less. Not, definitely not snag proof, but snagless. Just like that, that's how I run a lot of my baits. Looks terrible, but they don't seem to care. Probably go size down and hook in that, but at least if I grab a 3.2, I could probably use the same one. That one in the pocket for when I get over there. And I might grab something else out at the same time. I might even grab a frog. A frog out, we'll look at that on. A red one so I can see it. That's on a straight worm hook, that one, so it'll probably float. Generally, I like them to sink back a little bit, but we'll go the, go the floating one to start with. They can go in the pocket as well. And I'm not playing trebles because they'll definitely get stuck in my pocket. A bit of sun would be good. I'm going to see it. All right, let's get this one. A mini one. A little tiny one. A 
Look at these little white fins here, it's cool. Scoffed it. There's that one. When I first started fishing the Hastings, like, have to be close to 14 or 15 years ago now, the, it was full of these things, hey. Like, so many tiny bass. Yeah, he's cool, I'll get him back. So we've just come up to a really, like, this is quite a big pool for this river. Um, the shallow stuff hasn't seemed to have any fish in it, but this is really deep in comparison to what we've been on, and that's sort of the first deep snag we've been to. What I've got on, I've only got like a little 16th ounce head with, um, rig weedless with a two and a half inch minnow. Can't make it to the other side, so I'll concentrate on fishing, fishing ahead of myself on this side. Um, and just being weedless, I can get it into nearly anywhere. They're not super active with this storm, so all this bit of weather, but I reckon if we get it in there close enough, I'll be still hungry enough. I think a little one chased there, no? Let's have a think. I made it a bit funny. Um, what have we got? All right, just gonna try and fish this gravelly edge. It's a fair cast over to the rocks and I've got a, a heavier plastic on to punch over there shortly. Probably throw a top water as, as well, but I'm um, just gonna crank it all just on this nice drop off with the Spike 53. Super underrated bass lure, especially in the creeks. Cast like a demon. They're in a funny mood, so I've gone for a pretty bright color. Uh, we'll see how we go. I just had a couple of little tiny ones follow it, so that's a good sign. Something different, and not eating what we started with, so let's try this one instead. I'll send her over the other side here, see what happens. How is there not a bite there? It's ridiculous. So, it's, it's getting late-ish. I'm gonna go with a bit more top water. It's been actually dismal. There's, um, I just don't think there's big numbers of fish up here at the moment, but there's a little bit of action starting to flick around the surface, so I'm gonna get the frog out. I did have a, a black one on. Uh, I wanna be able to see it a bit easier. So I'm gonna go to the new Amaguru color. Nice bright green, white belly, just textbook bass frog color. Got a little slightly weighted uh, worm hook because I do like to have them cast a little better. And also if the fish miss, I like to, like to let it sort of sink. So I'm gonna use it as both, I can burn it across the top and then I can drop it back if they get a bit of attention and they miss it. Decent size hook, perfect. Skim that through pretty much anything, I think. Also got the bigger kicker curly in black. Yeah, hopefully just the um, one I can cast a bit further, a bit easier to cast on a bait caster, and two, hopefully that bit of extra presence in the water, if there is one there, might make them actually come to it. So I just thought I'd have a little flick. Didn't even cast across, I thought I'd heard a bass on the rocks over there, but I had a little warm up cast along the rocks here on the gravel and smashed the big kicker curly. How cool is that? Favorite time of the day. On top water time, I'm getting back. I don't think I've ever seen one that big. Mm -hmm. I'm going to smash it and find out. Yeah, Paddy's not that strong. Not that strong. <laughs> yeah, Paddy Melon. Red seeds. No good. Sort of always happens when you least expect it. So I threw into the best bits and then just another random cast over there and something sucked the spider off the top and went around a log and now I don't have it anymore. So I'll throw a frog instead. All right, 
So it's pretty well key if you've got an overhanging branch like that, most likely the fish are going to be up under there. It also gives you a bit more distance when you're winding the frog out um, for the fish to be comfortable to eat it. You need to be able to skip cast into those areas. and the, It is hard, the deeper you are in the water, the less chance you have of getting the right angle, but it's just all about having a really low trajectory and a really like firm cast to make that lure skip the whole way in. The kicker curlies are really good for it, nice and broad, plenty of surface area, so they do skip like a big round stone. Um, we'll give it a go, you don't get it every time, but. It's actually pretty hard to do in this sort of water when you're sitting, um, sitting quite deep, but it's absolutely key when they're being fussy like this. If, if there's an area like that you can get to, it nearly needs to hit the bank, eh? Like, you've got to be up there. And that's where you need to be able to skip cast it real good. And these frogs are awesome for it. There he is. Ooh. He actually came. I watched him come off that other log. He had a mate with him, too. There we go. Look at that. Old kicker curly. So what happens when you get it in the right spot. Beautiful. Look at that. Slabby. Fought really hard for the size of it, actually. That's probably only a high 30s, maybe a 40 centimetre fish. Cool colour. Scoff it down. Look at that. One righty. It's a good sign. Yay, I caught one. Watch him come up behind that. Oh, come on. This is where I need the frog to sing properly. Oh, there he is. <laughs> that was sick. Not that big man, he's cranky, hey. The shallow water, they just go like a freight train. Little fella. Man, that thing was angry, wasn't it? That was real cool. Oh. Smoked it. That definitely wasn't the first fish we saw. We popped up along that weed bed. I could see that fish feeding in there. Um, this one actually charged, it looked like, from the middle of the river, but I reckon there's a couple more to be had at the end of this pool. See you, mate. Boos! <laughs> that was sick. He jammed that. Oh, <laughs> I should have hit him. <laughs> Alrighty, it's getting prime time for catching bass, but definitely not prime time for filming. She's getting a bit dark, so we're just about done. Um, it's been a pretty tough afternoon. They definitely haven't been on the chew. It's been a been a really funny sort of mood. The clouds come over and they weren't, um, yeah, the bass weren't, definitely weren't on the chew. So I reckon we'll um, fish the rest of this hole and back to it bright and early. Always at the bottom of a pool, bit of running water. Couldn't help but have a cast to finish the day off and this little fella ate it. See ya, buddy. Don't go down that way, that's downhill. going to drive up a bit further than we did yesterday to cut a bit of the walk out, see if we can get a bit of fresh ground. New sticks right at the start of it are worth a shot this morning. And then uh, right where it deepens up both sides might be worth a run as well. Oh, 
Misty. Still there. Oh, there's buddy. <laughs> Little fella. Yeah, it's very cool to lure that thing. A mate from Tun Curry, Rob makes them some RV lures. Just got a, it's just a perfect weight bait. The timber clicks. The little white tail moves like crazy. They do tend to miss it every now and again, but he, he won it pretty well. I probably should use the pliers, actually. I actually missed a fish in there yesterday in the afternoon, so I thought I can't resist a quick cast in there on the way up. And this little guy charged off the bank and smoked a little mouse. Might even be another one there yet. Should be sitting right up tight to those gravel when we went for a walk last night. There's heaps and heaps. There's really bright chartreuse and brown frogs. Oh, a little one grabbed it. <laughs> Love that. And those bass should be sitting there waiting for those guys. They should be sitting waiting for those frogs to jump in. It doesn't have to be a big bass to eat the big kick of curly. Look at that thing. Super ambitious. Just proves when they want it, they don't really miss it. And what I've always found is the bigger the bait and the bigger the hook, the less you actually miss the fish. So quite often I'll fish that big bait if they have been a bit funny on the on the surface. So pop that hook out and weed him back. As I said, that the most likely scenario at the moment, the way they've been, that there's not a lot of fish in that really deep, bouldery stuff. I think if you're gonna get a better one, maybe, uh, the very active fish are sitting in this shallow stuff which is quite common this time of the morning. They're just waiting for the bugs and the frogs and everything to run off the bank and intercept and eat and away we go. I reckon we'll get a couple along here. Oh, scare a mullet? Was it? No, it's a bass behind it, I think. Or a mullet behind it. Uh, swirled. It's a bass. <laughs> he thought about that for a while, didn't he? They're not big fish, but they're having a really good go. Yeah, there you go. Big kicky curly in the shallows. Can't resist them. Big frog muncher. Nice. Alrighty, we're just gonna head up uh, head upstream this morning from where we were yesterday. Already caught a couple of smaller fish, which is a nice little bonus. It's typical, you always have the ambition to push upstream, but when you know that there's good looking spots, you gotta have a cast, and this morning it worked out all right. So. I think we're just going to punch around with the kicker curly most of the morning. Um, it's a perfect morning for it. These hills here have got shade for a long time too, so it could be a, a pretty extended topwater bite. Um, once that dies off, I'd say, as tough as it's been, we're going to have to go subsurface, throw a few little Steez jig spinners around and some plastics and see if we can't drag out of the snags. Hope for a bigger one this morning. There's a few fish in this pool uh, that we didn't get, so hopefully they'll uh, they'll chew pretty good this morning. Oh, like that! <laughs> ah, small one again. Keep us entertained in between, anyway. Okay. Love the little white tips on their tail, so cool. No, it was real quick. It was off that snag. It's shallow the whole way through here, so it's not far for him to go. sink a little. 
Alrighty, look how far that fella got it down. He had a real good pop at it on the surface and I missed him. And I've got a little bit of lead on the front of the frog. So when he missed it, I let it sink back towards him one twitch and you could just see him charge back out and engulfed it. Absolutely engulfed it. Yep. Nice little fish. Not a great deal of size in them this morning compared to yesterday, but they're pretty active. So we'll get him back in there. Good. They might. All right, at least they're chewing. Let's get some get the bigger one. Maybe up with this current. Hopefully, hopefully that's where the big one. Alrighty, we've just come through a really big open pool uh, into a fairly shallow section, and it's coming into sort of the next rapid to the next pool. We've got lots of current, massive big tree, and a few boulders. There's pretty much no better textbook bass area. Um, I like to work it pretty slowly, pick it apart. There's lots of areas that the bass could actually sit in here, uh, and probably a couple of different lures you could throw at them, but the most likely spots are those current breaks uh, and any undercut or shaded pieces. So where the current's hitting down here in the back eddies, because it's early in the morning, they could be up shallow, uh, but later in the day with this sun coming up, you'd definitely be looking for those shady pockets and under those logs. So perfect area, and I reckon we should be able to get one or two fish out of this lot. Sort of, it's catch between too. Sometimes you do want to have a longer rod to be able to really hammer a cast out, but as a whole, this little bass stick is like the perfect little rod for pitching into stuff. Light bait caster, that's a decent sized lure, so it makes it a lot easier, but it's small enough to get through the trees. Got a good action that you can throw just about anything on it. Let's use the frog and get it right in there. Beautiful. Nice one, actually. Good healthy fish. Smoked it. That little pocket there, water run, running into a pool, uh, just after a really shallow run, narrow run, there's no better spot for a bass to be sitting. He's just sitting there waiting for anything that comes down that run. Like kick a curly. We'll get him off and get him back. Not a giant, but a pretty decent fish for this water. Skinny water. Off she goes. Lovely. Let's catch another one. That was fun. Grab a kick of curly. Yeah, what do we do? We got a white one this time? Let's go a white one. All right, we're just going to rig up one of the new big kick of curlies. Uh, preferably, I do like to have a little bit of belly weight on the hook, but I haven't got any with me at the moment, so just a straight worm hook will do. Well, some of the easiest plastics to rig there is. Pin it just through the nose, probably five or six mil. Just so it's enough to sit in the lock of the hook. Push it down until it sits there nice and firm. Line up where it's going to come through. So this is a 4-0 that I'm going to put in this one, which is the perfect size. It sits right at the back of the hook cavity, um, which is perfect for, a, um, perfect for a big bass's mouth. They do have a large mouth, so you want the hook up and you want the hook to be nice and big so it finds its mark, uh, that hook will be fine for jacks and, and smaller cod and stuff like that as well. So pin it through and away we go. You can see the shape of that hook actually has a slight point down, uh, which helps it's, helps being weedless, helps being snag proof. Um, but because these things are so soft, the hookup doesn't seem to be affected too much at all. So we'll tie that on, burn it across the top and I reckon we'll hook a couple of bass on that. Um, for the kicker curlies, they don't tend to need a, a loop knot. It's a straight pull. They don't need to have any side-to-side -side action. Um, and I always find that a, a standard um, uni knot or a San Diego jam knot, it's plenty to hold it. Um, so tie it straight on. This has got a 4-0 in it. For the smaller kicker curly, the original one, uh, I personally prefer a 2-0. Some guys like a 1-0. Uh, but I always find the bigger the hook you can get in the bait for bass, the better the hookup is. So. Just a little bit of a tip, bigger hook is always better if you can.
Where'd you map? Probably in this morning. Lovely. Oh, Where are you going? Oh, Easy ass. Alright, that's probably probably us. Sun's up, frog bite's done. Probably going to wander back to the car. We might have a few, few casts at some of the smaller pools downstream from where we started on the way back home, but might go and pack up and see what else we can catch this week. Oh god, why is he going all the way up there? What's happening? Oh, I think I jagged a mullet, hey. <laughs> this is weird. Bass. Why did he swim all the way under the rocks? Just thought if they're a bit funny, they're not in a super crazy mood. Something a bit slower. Oh, look at his mate. Look at his mate there. Now what do I do, Richard? Ta-da! <laughs> Two at a time. That's a good one that ate the double clutch too. Look at him. We'll deal with the one with the deal with the one with the plastic first. Decent fish too. I've got one on there, I hook one on a double clutch. And I seen him, he, for some reason, I think he must have been running away from this one when I hooked him, because he bowled it all the way up along the rocks. And as I'm fighting him, I can see this one behind it. So I grabbed the rod out of the backpack and threw the minnow at it, and he came back and ate it. Awesome. That was sick. Not a bad fish either. Good, healthy, high back on him. Real nice one. We'll get him back and we'll get this other one off. Solo double hookup. Nice bass. Smash that double clutch straight away. I must have cast it right in the right spot. There we go. Pretty sick way to end a end an awesome little bass session. Wasn't a massive walk that we did, but it was a perfect spot for a quick afternoon in the morning. Um, super happy with the new TD black rods. I'll uh, I'll definitely be getting a couple of these for myself. The bass stick for the bait caster and the little wicked weasel for throwing. Um, on plastics and frogs and stuff around. Been a great session. Didn't catch heaps of fish, but those last couple sort of made up for anything we would have missed anywhere else. We're done now, we'll head back to the car and take the rough road home and pack up and get out of here.